Renault's revitalised Kajar takes a very class competitive engineering formula and develops it just that little bit further in this improved form. This SUV is now better primed for petrol power, plus it's smarter both inside and out. It's only a more interesting family choice than that Focus Class hatch you might have been considering. And there's the option of four-wheel drive if you want some substance to go with the style. Like all the best family mid-sized SUV models, this Kajar requires very little acclimatisation once you set off behind the wheel. Unless you really start to throw the thing around, you'll find that it handles just like any other ordinary family hatchback and rides probably better than most of them. Under the bonnet, Renault's taken the opportunity with this improved model lineup to revise the entire engine range, principally with the introduction of a far more class competitive volume petrol engine, a 1.3 litre TCE power plant offered in either 140 or 160 horsepower guises. The lesser unit can be had with the option of a 7-speed EDC auto transmission, but it's the TCE160 derivative we're trying here, which delivers a very reasonable set of WLTP rated NEDC2 running cost stats, 42.8 mpg on the combined cycle and 136 grams per kilometre. We can't help thinking though that the sweet spot in the range might still be the 1.5 litre DCI diesel units now upgraded with better sound insulation and an AdBlue selective catalyst to reduce particulate emissions. Plus there's also a fraction more power, hence the new blue DCI 115 badging. Diesel buyers also get offered a 1.7 litre DCI 150 engine, which is the one you have to have if you want the option of getting your Kajar fitted out with four-wheel drive. That's a setup which can instantly react to a loss of traction and send up to 50% of drive to the rear wheels when necessary. The DCI 150 variants get more sophisticated independent rear suspension, but even the more conventional setup fitted to lesser Kajars is very adept and cushioning away poorly tarmac surfaces. So yes, you'll like this car on the school run, which of course, for all the urban adventurer marketing, is actually its preferred habitat. So, what do we have here? A Nissan Qashqai with a Renault restyle or something more? Well, the Kajar certainly shares much with its Japanese design stablemate, primarily its CMF or Common Module Family platform and most of its engine technology. Renault admits that 60% of this car's parts are shared with its Nissan cousin, but claims that 95% of what you see and feel with this Kajar is unique to this model. Visually, as you might expect, it shares quite a lot with the French brand's smaller capture SUV, especially here at the front, where the two cars are very similar indeed. Changes have been made here with this revised Kajar, though you'd probably have to be a salesperson or a real brand enthusiast to notice them. The grille is slightly wider and can now feature chrome slats on top variants. Plus, there are new cutout sections for reshaped fog lamps that can feature full LED technology. All this has meant the need for a restyled bumper, which now features a larger area of body coloured paintwork. Behind the wheel, there's certainly a higher quality ambience than there was before, thanks to a fascia redesign that's brought us this smarter, flush-fitting 7-inch infotainment screen and these sophisticated circular climate control dials with their incorporated digital readouts. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring is now standard across the range. The seats offer greater support, the door panels have been redesigned, there's now a sliding centre armrest and the door bins are bigger. Otherwise, things are much as before, with a relatively commanding driving position and a configurable 7-inch TFT instrument display replacing conventional dials. Time to try the rear. Now, as usual in a car of this kind, it's comfortable for two adults, but a little bit of a squash for three. Headroom, though, is fine, unless you've a top model fitted with Renault's fixed panoramic roof, in which case really tall folk might be a touch restricted. If you really do need to take three adults back here, it's easier than is the case in some rivals, thanks to this low centre transmission tunnel and the fact that the middle part of the bench doesn't force you to sit on an uncomfortably raised section of foam. 
Compared to a Qashqai, you get a slightly longer body length with this Qajar, and that pays dividends when it comes to boot space, which is rated at 472 litres. 42 litres more than you'd get in that Nissan. Useful touches include this multi-positional adjustable height boot floor and these Easy Life cargo sidewall catches that allow you to more easily retract the 60-40 split rear seat back to free up 1,478 litres of total space. In summary, well, you could say that it would have been difficult for Renault to fail with this SUV, given the proven underpinnings it's based upon. For a decade, though, this French brand had the right ingredients for a model like this, but failed to blend them together into an appropriate car for the crossover crowd. Now that it has, the brand was never going to risk spoiling things by making too many far-reaching changes. But the updates made here have been timely and well judged. This Kajar may not be the ultimate urban adventurer, the ads claim, but it's the kind of car that really could add a more appealing dimension to family travel.